Thank you so much for clicking the thumbnail and being interested in my work. In this video, I share with you how I create the skin tone for this portrait of my sister Jill and also the hair. So be sure to watch it right through till the end because here and there I'll be slowing things down in real time so you can take a closer look. So let's dive in and take a look. Now just starting this with the outline finished, I actually used the method of freehand and cross-reference technique. Here's a selection of pencils I'm using for the underdrawing. And for the darker shadows, just cold red and dark green there. Just going to show you in brief how I do the underdrawing. Uh, just using the white to start with more pressure where it's lighter, less where it's mid-tone. Just ghosting the outline with a Faber-Castell kneadable eraser. Just using the Carbothello white here, just very slight pressure here and there. Just working out which parts are lighter, just pressing on more with the pencil. Basically getting some pigment down there, but the idea of the underdrawing is to correct the outline and to create some form. Uh, I'm not interested in getting the values right or the chroma, it's all about getting the shape of things and making sure everything's in the correct place. So I'm using the warm red and yellow ochre as a basic colour. Now to desaturate the red I'm using olive green, it's a complementary colour. So if you ever want to desaturate a colour or make a shadow of that colour, just use its complementary colour. Now there's loads of subtleties in the skin tone, but with this stage it's all about just relaxing and enjoying the freedom of just moving things around. Just make sure it goes on really light, because you need to keep that tooth there for when you start putting the richer colours on. Uh, but this is really good foundation because it makes it easier for the subsequent layers. Just blocking in these teeth just with the white to start with. Like I say, it's not the details at all, it's just getting things in the right place. Now some areas I just put the pigment straight down onto the pastel mat and then put the white on the top. So if it's darker than the mid-tone, I tend to do that. And then it's just working out what's the best way of approaching it. Uh, it all comes with experience. But if doing it very loosely, these are really chalky pencils as well. So, you know, when you start putting the richer colors on, it really mixes well and it makes life a lot easier. If you're enjoying this video, why not subscribe? It's absolutely free, and then you're sure not to miss any of my future videos. Now for the rich colour stage. Now these are the pre-mixed colours I normally use with Caran d'Ache, but you can actually mix these pencils by using the basic red and yellow ochre. Uh, it's just a combination of those colours. So I've decided just to keep with the basic colours. Um, for the white I'm using the Faber-Castell plus the pencils I've used previously. For the white of the eyes I'm using a blue and orange. Now the orange and blue is a perfect combination for this white of the eyes. I use the same combination for the teeth as well. It just seems to really do the trick. And then I add a little bit of blue and red occasionally to create some purples. But just basically that combination seems to work well. Now with the iris it's like my sister's got like a greeny blue colour eyes. So I'm adding the olive green first and then just using the white to get the shape of the iris there. I tend to do both eyes at the same time so I don't lose my way because if you do one eye and then say three hours later you do the other eye, you, you, sometimes you forget the combination of colours you've used. So I tend to try and do the eyes together so I can keep them looking the same colours. Some areas of the white of the eyes are like a purpley colour as well, so that's where I'm using a light ultramarine here and a cold red. 
The rich colour stage initially is still a block in, so what I'm doing is just getting a richer colour in there, looking at the chroma, focusing on getting the values more correct and a sort of temperature as well. So what I tend to do is see what's more fresher. So if there's an area that feels fresher and more vibrant, I use the Faber-Castell white in this instance and glaze over that. But if anything is like more subtle or subdued, I use the Carbothello white. Now the Faber-Castell is really good for sort of the subtle blending as well because it's more chalkier. So my technique works like putting the white down and then keep glazing over the top and every layer creates different subtle blends and, and texture. Now I'm using lemon yellow here because this area is more glowy. Now you tend to find that if it's a tan face, a bit of lemon yellow and a bit of olive green actually helps with the actual colour tone, which you'll see me doing later is putting olive green in there. For the pupil initially I'm using brown, I will add blue to that, but maybe later on when I've done all the subtleties I might need to put a little bit of black in there because they, it is one of the darkest areas of the painting. So I'm using the olive green and adding that little bit of blue to make it more of a bluey greeny colour and then just to get them highlights there I'm just twisting the white paint saw there, just adding a little bit more highlight than it is in the actual original photograph, just to create that sort of aliveness to the eyes. Now here I'm using ultramarine dark, putting that in first just to find the location of the eyelashes. So I'm happy with the position, then I can go in then with black or brown. Now my sister's got some blue green eye makeup there, just below the eye. Um, so I'm putting that in using the blue and lemon yellow. Now brown and blue make great greys, so I'm using that as opposed to using black. So I'm creating my own blacks by using brown and blue. Just like to thank all my Patreons for all their wonderful support every month. Can't thank you enough, I really appreciate it. If you're considering joining me on Patreon and would like the benefit of longer, slower and more in-depth videos, please check out the link in the description below. Now this portrait of my sister will be on there at some point. It'll all be real-time footage, so you'll be able to see and hear me step by step in the moment and my thoughts and feelings as I progress through the portrait. Just going to block in now the hair, just so it gives me an idea then of the overall feel of it. So I'm putting some darkness in there um, first. Just see hair as blocks of shade, so it gets really blocky to start with, then eventually it gets more and more refined as you put more and more detail in. But this stage it's just about just getting an idea where things, these shapes are, and getting a general feel for it. But what it does, it helps me then to judge the skin tone more accurately if I can get this area dark as it should be. So what I've done on the edge of that is put a bit of black in there to create that sort of depth. Just slow it down to real time now so you can see how I'm doing these teeth. Uh, just doing the gums here, just adding a little bit of blue to the red just to create that sort of purpley colour of the actual gum colour. Then add in that little bit of lemon yellow in areas on the lips just to create the chroma because there's different temperatures you see. Now I'm using a warm red, the Caran d'Ache, to create that warmth. Add in that lemon yellow as well gives it that sort of vibrancy I'm looking for. But sometimes you have to use different reds so I'm adding a little bit of cold red there as well so it's warm red and cold red together with a bit of yellow. So you have to play uh, until you get that feeling right. Now I'm correcting the tint of that and making sure that the edge of the lips are not too sharp because you don't want it to look like plastic lips.
Here's a must-have tool in your kit. It's called a colour shaper. Ideal for them really fine detail areas. You just dab it, so you like picking up the pigment and just moving it around very slowly. You don't press on because it'll lift the pigment off the pastel mat. It's just a little dab here and there and just move it around and it makes all the difference. It's like painting then. So you put your pigment down and then just move it around. Now for the lips here, I'm using two different reds. I'm using the warm red, this is the Vermilion, and then the cold red from the Caran Dash range. Very rich in vibrancy, so I'm really trying to make these sort of be fresh and vibrant, these uh, lips. Now I'm using the Carbothello now just to smooth things out. Carbothello white in preparation then for actually putting the colour into the teeth. Now these are the colours again, the same as what I use for the eye colour, the orange and blue. Seems to do the trick. <clears throat> so just go over, put a little bit of pigment, just glaze the blue pigment over the white on all the teeth. And then put the orange in places where it needs to be more of a, a grey, a desaturated look. You'll know, you'll sense which parts are more bluer and which are more sort of uh, neutral. So it's a case of just experimenting and moving it around. Just softening things up again with the white. This is a Carbothello white. I'm just going over this part here where the gums are, We're just making them a little bit more purpley colour using light ultramarine blue. Now here I'm putting the highlights on with the Faber-Castell. It's really vibrant white this is and it's a hard pencil so you could actually sharpen it to quite a nice point and then twist it and the grain of the pastel mat will grab that pigment. So here I'm just putting the red and the green for the shadow inside the mouth just through the gaps of the teeth there and then for the lips here I'm just using the Carbothello white again just to lighten everything up and freshen it. Some areas I'm using a cotton board just to blend the pastel so it gets rid of the grain because what I'm doing is using the grain from the layer after layer after layer I'm still getting that dark grey coming through on the speckles so sometimes they are a little bit too dark speckles so what I do is use that cotton board just to smooth it out a little bit and make them lighter so then when I go over again the grain is not or the texture is not too prominent but I don't want it to make it too smooth because skin tone is not like plastic it has to have that little bit of subtlety and different texture so I still go over with, with the white with little dif different circles and what have you but here I'm just making the makeup look more uh, realistic just a case of painting what you see there's not much detail in the reference image at all so you just paint the colour what you see and then what happens is when someone looks at the picture from a distance the eye sort of fills in the gaps and it looks realistic. So sometimes you have to be a bit sort of suggestive with the marks when you haven't got that detail there. Now the eyelashes, I'm using the actual 708 grey pencil I used for the outline there, perfect really, to uh, mark things up. And then once I'm happy with the placement of it, I start then to go in with the brown then and make things a little bit more deeper in colour. If you would like to know more about how I create skin tone shadows, be sure to check out the link in the description below for this free class on how to create shadows using pastel pencils. Now it's the time to block in the hair, so again 
All you do with this is really relax, let go of the mind, open the heart and let it flow from you. So let that image come into you rather than you focusing too much on the outside and let these movements happen. So it's all about getting a rhythm with the hair and just seeing it as blocks of colour and light and shade. So I've made it simple to start with by just using brown and white. Just get that shape in there first and then you can glaze over the top. If you enjoyed this video why not give it a like and share it with your friends. It would mean so much to me as this would help the channel to grow. When I do the hair, I'm still aware of everything else. So everything's one, so I'm not trying to separate anything by putting too much details in one area. So while I'm doing the hair, I'm still aware of the skin tone, the personality and everything else. So I'm spreading my vision. And how I do that is to open my heart again and come from awareness rather than thinking. And keep that reference image small enough so you can see the whole energy and emotion and then just go with the flow of it just let it happen be spontaneous with it really relax and enjoy using these simple sort of colors to start with now on for the details now so what I'm using now is a dark brown from the Karen Dash range with the black of the Carbothello I'm mixing a little bit of uh, dark blue in with it as well to give it depth and then I'm using a colour that is similar to what I'm looking for from the Faber-Castell range. So just using these Faber-Castell pencil here and just like going with the flow again, just putting little bits of dark areas here, very light pressure in some areas. But then if you find that you've gone too thick with the pencil, you can actually use the same colour pastel pencil as the board which is 706 from the Carbothello range. Here I'm experimenting with different colour from the Faber-Castell because they've got quite a lot of browns in there just to see what I could find. But then I ended up doing what I normally do is just use the brown from the Carbothello range and then glaze over a bit of lemon yellow. The highlights there are white, a bit of blue and lemon yellow because there's like all sorts of colours in the hair. There's greens, there's purples, there's reds. So you just got to sort of play with the colours, just glazing these different colours over the top. I'm using burnt sienna as well. I'm using a bit of black in there to get some depth. So burnt sienna, blue, yellow ochre, lemon yellow. Basically that's the colours I've used for the hair. Here again, just using the black to get some depth into the hair first and glaze over with the burnt sienna going over with the white of the faber castell it's about getting that depth of value right this is really important to, to create realism is to create the right depth in there and i'm glazing over again with the blue burnt sea and they make great greys so perfect really for this sort of thing and it creates a shimmer as well and there's all these different sort of subtleties when you use the blue and the burnt sienna together and if you need something which is a bit more sort of glowing or got some more chroma just add that bit of lemon yellow and it's a case just relaxing just letting it flow and really enjoy the freedom of it really and don't try and draw every hair exactly the same as the reference image it'll drive you nutty best thing to do is just get something similar so you don't lose yourself in the randomness of it so you've got a similar pattern but you just let go with the flow of it and and just enjoy the freedom I'm using a Faber-Castell brown here because you can sharpen it to a really fine point because it's a hard lead in it and I'm just putting some very very fine wisps in here just to give that sort of feeling of the wisps of hair. Thank you so much for watching the video right till the end I really appreciate it 
Now there will be a lot more details going into the skin tone and the hair on the final stages after I've put the hat in and the clothes which will be the next video so be sure to watch out for that. Now if there's any questions at all please leave a comment and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you've enjoyed the video please give it a thumbs up, it really helps with the algorithm. And if you're interested in seeing any more of my work please check out this video here.